You're drinking 12 a night? Eventually turned into freaking handles of vodka. Did you go to AA or rehab? Try to get the most alcohol per volume. 11%. She may, she may bang you, she may not. <laughs> Two margaritas up, open my legs. Three, you know that. <laughs> in addition to AA or counseling, you gotta have some strategies. Like there was somebody that commented. Why do you think you stopped drinking, just in general? Me? Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting question because. Oh, oh man. man. I think you should just wear it like this. What's up? Like that. What's up? <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? If you missed it, Cullen and I both have made a couple videos about our story of what's been going on the last year. Quitting drinking basically um, is the like big broad topic, but there's like a million little topics underneath and there are so many questions, so many things that people wanted to know for their own benefit, for like just being nosy want to know about us. <laughs> so we want to answer some of them. And one of the first questions is, did you go to AA or rehab? There's so much to unpack here with this whole thing and it's hard to just only talk about one thing <laughs> because there's so much to it. It's like every single question that somebody asks, there's like a million underlying other little questions. Yes and no. I tried AA for a couple times. It just wasn't for me. I felt like everybody else in there for some reason was way off way worse than I was or had way more experience than I did at the time. Um, as far <laughs> I'm as... just laughing that such a typical like <laughs> addict thing. Like everybody else is way worse. I'm fine. <laughs> well, some of their but still, no, I you know what I mean? mean? Like they, they had like had 17 different felonies or you know stuff like that like legally um, in trouble or have financially like lost everything and it is the stereotypical like living under the bridge. I think that's kind of like part of what I talked about in my video too is that I think a lot of times when people think of an addict is or an alcoholic is you think of like somebody living under a bridge but you literally interact with like multiple alcoholics probably in your day-to-day -day life and don't even realize it. There's a lot of people that just drink a little too much or too often or in any way that it's impacting your life in some form or fashion and becoming something that you go, am I drinking too much? Somebody else tells you you've been drinking too much. Then you probably have some sort of an issue with it. Even if it's not too much, even if it's just that one at night, even if you're questioning that one glass of wine with dinner every night because it's good for your cholesterol and your heart. <laughs> but is it turning into more slowly? Is it slowly snowballing into something bigger? That's only something you can decide, I guess. I think 12-step um, programs in general, are, in general are great, but different things work for different people. And so for me personally, my biggest issue has been dealing with like being the spouse in this whole situation. Obviously, I quit drinking too, which I talked about in my video. But for me, my relationship with alcohol was very different than his. I did still need to quit drinking also, but it wasn't, it just wasn't the same. So it wasn't quite as hard for me to deal with that part of it. It was more dealing with our relationship and dealing with the history of like addiction stuff that's gone on in our relationship that has caused me stress that I've allowed to stress me. So I started going to Al-Anon, which is a 12 step program for families and friends of anybody who has an alcohol problem, spouse, a uh, parent, like there's adult children of alcoholics, there's people who go because their kids are alcoholics and it's been immensely helpful for me and it's basically modeled after AA and uses the same 12 steps. As extroverted as I seem, the, the shame and the deep underlying tug that I had going into it, I felt like I needed to have like more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody, so that's what I did. I tried to look around. We actually uh, found somebody, marriage counselor, that after she heard our story, kind of which, like what y'all heard, was like, oh, let me get you in touch with somebody more specialized in AA or alcohol addiction for me. So that's what I did. I went and I don't know, it, it was kind of similar because the guy had the same mindset as me. He said, hey, it wasn't for me. So then I started doing this using their 12 step programs in a sense, but he started with the psychology behind it and the, I'm getting down a whole nother rabbit hole. But okay. basically I was able to find somebody that I could talk to 
in a one-on-one -on -one setting in a room and then pour my heart out to, we all have the same tug at the end of the day if you are in that type of addiction. We're all like brothers and sisters in the addiction. Way more older than me, had been through way more trauma than me due to alcohol and his addiction. At the end of the day, we were still connected on a base level of having this addiction that we have to deal with every day. Which so. I think is a cool part of 12 step programs too, because that's something that you learn is whether it's the guy living under the bridge that has like 10 DUIs and has like gotten kicked out and is homeless. There's so many underlying components that are going to be the same. Like that's what in going to Al-Anon meetings for me, hearing people's stories, even of like, it's a mom who's there because the mom is dealing with her child's alcoholism. So many of the things she worries about, I can relate to. It's just strange how it's all together. So why do you think you stopped drinking? Just in general? Me? Mm-hmm. Mm, you going on a different rabbit hole now. It just crossed my mind when you said, I stopped drinking, you know, too, and blah, blah, blah. And we kind of hypothetically thought about this. If, you know, you lost your spouse, or if I died, I'm never going to get remarried, or I'm going to get, or I'm going to come back and haunt you in the closet, <laughs> and that kind of thing. I've or, never said that. No. <laughs> But you know, there's that, there's that hypothetical out there. I was thinking, you know, what if I died or what if I wasn't here? What if I got divorced? Would she remarry and still want to partake? Or would she find somebody that wasn't as addicted to alcohol as me and could control it by having one every night? It kind of goes back to, the, in my previous video, I felt like I turned you into an alcoholic. You know, that whole scenario of like, would you still? That's interesting. So I'm going to answer mm. that question. <laughs> you've never asked me that before. When this whole thing started and the people who were on the other side of it, who were like, their life had turned around and things were for the better. They were like, you'll be thankful for addiction eventually. And you'll be thankful you went through this. And I was like, there is no way in hell I'm going to be <laughs> thankful for this. My kids are suffering from it. I'm suffering from it. We're miserable. But here's my answer. Had it been five years ago and when this whole thing started and we started with like arguing and addiction and like all the drama that goes with it and we had gotten divorced, I wouldn't have even second guessed marrying somebody who drank because I'd have been like, well, I mean, everybody else can handle it. He obviously just couldn't or, mm, you know, whatever. Right. And I wouldn't have quit drinking either. I was always the one, even like when we're at the beach, everybody else is like, you know, everybody else is drinking, have a drink. I'm like, I'm just not ready yet. Like, I don't, I don't want to like ruin my day with drinking all day. If we were to, if something oh, were sorry. to happen. Anyways, Ooh, there's a if wasp. something, and Asher's trying to get it, get him in. Cat about got attacked by a wasp. We're good. If something were to happen now, one, no, I would not start drinking again. Even like one, just for the heck of it. And two, I don't think I would even consider dating anybody that would even just have one drink and be okay with it. Because I know that that has the potential to turn into more. As I learned in like a book that I listened to that changed my whole perspective. And just through all of this is that alcoholism is a progressive disease and there are people some some people who can all their life just have one when they go somewhere they can just have one when they go to a wedding or whatever but for the majority of people if you look at yourself 10 years ago you were probably drinking less then than you are now even if you don't have like a problem with it it picks up like if mm -hmm. it's gonna progress it's gonna progress and then it was beer like i remember and it started with just a six pack and then this was before we had high gravity oh, legal, legalized in Alabama. You'd go out of town to Atlanta, Georgia or something and they'd have like the 8% alcohol and you'd get that and you'd be like, what the heck? So then Alabama came out with theirs and so I was like a, brew, a brewing connoisseur there for the longest time and I would just try to get the most uh, alcohol per volume, 11% and she may, she may bang you, she may not. <laughs> The 13% sipping, you know, that slowly, t uh, well, it turned into like, well, we gotta drink a beer while we're watching Monday Night Raw. There was always an on, excuse. There was always an excuse, mm -hmm, and then for... slowly, the more I look back on it, it was like, you're drinking 12 a night? It eventually turned into freaking handles of vodka. Yeah. You know? Well, and the more you realize, like, what underlying problems it's actually causing, or mood, health, like, relationship, all of the things, it's like, it's not even worth it to reintroduce it. Now, had you asked me a year ago, even, or maybe two years ago, there were some issues, but we were, like, managing our drinking fine, you know, a two, three years ago. Well, I'll say that. It probably wasn't. We probably weren't. But <laughs> it's probably, like, the average person who... Not the average person. Okay, it's more than that. See, this is <laughs> this is where you convince yourself of things. I'll just say that it wasn't like it was an ongoing, like constant problem, and we were like really worried that it was a problem. We were just drinking when we go out. We were drinking like and functioning, and it was fine. 
It's fine until it wasn't fine. At that time, I couldn't imagine going on a trip, hanging out with friends, going to the pool, or any other excuse that you have for drinking without a drink. So I would have been like, well, yeah, I'm gonna make sure that I marry somebody who doesn't drink too much. I will make sure that I like, get with somebody. <laughs> These are all my plans that I have for get with somebody, by the way. I think the right answer was supposed to be, I would never marry somebody with you. <laughs> Sorry if I went the wrong direction. I'll just make sure that somebody who has it under control because I don't want to give it up. And I remember at first, when we first started talking about it and we like quit drinking, I was like, this is so dumb. Like, I don't want to give this up because I don't have a problem with it. I can go to the Mexican restaurant and get a that's, small margarita. That's what I was wondering. And be fine. I would feel the guilt of like, because of my disease and my addiction, she's not having the fun that she deserves or she could be having right now or enjoying the margarita. Two margaritas out, open, open my legs. legs. Three, you know that. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, we love, we <laughs> love Angel though. So. So good, good job on your song, it's great. <laughs> no disrespect to the margarita girl. You didn't necessarily have a problem, but I think within, and the reason we're married and all this is all happening for a reason we're exactly where we're supposed to be right now because of everything that's happened, but you didn't, you wouldn't have realized all your other stuff that you've worked on because of my addiction. So right. that, there's a double-edged catch, you know, a, a golden nugget out of right. that, I guess. <clears throat> that is where I started the whole thing with, was like, people say you'll be thankful for it, and I couldn't ever understand that. But now I'm like, I am thankful that I'm not thankful that we had to go through what we had to go through, but mainly like I'm thankful I realized I could live without it and I don't need it and life is actually better without it, which I would not have believed you. So like, weird. Wouldn't have believed like, you. Like I go to the pool now and I see the sunset or like I see like, and I'm just like soaking it in. I see everything. And my sister even said this a long time ago when we were still drinking. The best part about it is, is you're actually going to probably enjoy it more now that you're not drinking. It's like what? I'm going to be up there holding my drink celebrating that we're seeing this view. That leads me to my next question, unless you're about to say something. I was just gonna quickly <clears throat> say, when people would tell me that, I was like, but I don't get that because I feel like I do enjoy it more when I'm mm -hmm. drinking. And I still have those thoughts sometimes of like sitting on the beach and you're like, oh, look at my kids, because you've had a drink and a half. It's starting to hit you, and you're like, they're just so sweet. I just love them so much. Oh my gosh, the sunset is amazing! I but then you feel that. like you can only feel that way when you're drinking, and then it's like once it wears off, it almost has the opposite effect, and things just seem more annoying. And then you feel like you can't have those emotions without it, but now, 24 hours out of the day, I can see a sunset when I haven't had a drink, or I can see my kids doing something cute and be like, Oh my gosh, I'm just so thankful for this. I'm so thankful for the, my kids and right. the sunset and whatever. It, you see it clearly. You, you, you can see, see it clearly like, now. The, the beer is, is gone. gone. What do you do now? Like when you are in those sunset moments and you want to reach for a drink. There's times where I find myself just walking around with a can, just like I saw a meme of a guy holding a bottle of soy sauce or something. <laughs> he was holding a ketchup bottle because he felt like he like, needed something when in his not, hand. <laughs> Yeah, when you're not drinking anymore, but you just have that tendency mm -hmm. to just hold a can. And I could pick them out at the beach last week. Man, they were walking around holding that can like it was a baby locked and loaded on a... But they still had a hold of their kid almost <laughs> getting, you know, like on the inner tube, but they weren't spilling a drop. And I was just like, God bless. I see it differently now instead of That's just... how I used to see you. And I was like, Frick, can you put the drink down? Like just to walk to the touch your toes in the water? Why? What's it matter? Walk to the bathroom? Like, it's not that it matters. It's just like, you always had it with you. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try not to be like bitter on here. Cause I've gotten past a lot of this, but it's still, it's still in there. What do you do in those sunset moments when you want to drink or when you feel like it's a good time to or you used to have the drink in your hand. Well, so are you talking about like, what do you do in those actual moments? Or are you saying like, what's, as a, what's we an alternative? first quit drinking, as opposed to, so like, okay, maybe I think what you're asking is, like we started talking about like, did you go to AA or whatever? Mm -hmm. You did counseling and like, that's great and all, but you've got to have coping mechanisms outside of that. Yeah, also, that's what I mean. <laughs> if you've ever considered AA and you're thinking about it, don't let his experience with it deter you from going try it try a few different meetings because not all meetings are the same could be the ones you went to like it just wasn't right some of them are a little little different that's just my little plug for that the other thing though is like in addition to aa or counseling mm -hmm. you got to have some strategies like there was somebody that commented i'd love to know what your evenings look like now because that's where we get hung up feeling so bored without alcohol. I responded and I said, I totally feel this. It's definitely weird and uncomfortable feeling the first few weeks, 
maybe even the first month or two. Cause like, it's literally you stop drinking and you're like, what do I do with my hands? What are we supposed to be doing right now? While I didn't have the same like toxic relationship with alcohol that he did, it was still a habit and it was still just like routine. routine. It was just a routine. We tried to make sure we had something else to look forward to. Cause especially as people with ADHD, we're kind of looking for like a dopamine hit in general. And a lot of times alcohol was that for me. It wasn't as much like, oh my God, I just want to get drunk. I just want to feel a buzz. I just want to like get hammered. It was more just like, oh, I can't wait to like have that little sip because it just makes me feel all happy. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to try this new drink. Oh, we got these new drinks. For example, Cullen grilling immediately would mean like popping open a drink. Like there would be nights when he'd be like, oh, you want me to grill chicken? And I'm like, oh, no, not really. Cause I wouldn't want, that would mean he's gonna drink more than usual. Right, you know? I do remember that. Yeah, And I'd would, be like, yeah, it's okay, I'll make you, something. You just, <laughs> there'd be nights where you, you would just jump on dinner before I even mentioned it, just so yeah. I wouldn't grill. You'd start thinking about it like three or four and I'm like, well, if he's not grilling, he's gonna wait till five. But if he, if he starts up the grill, he's gonna go ahead and open one. When we first quit drinking, I think you didn't grill for I didn't a grill good for a significant. While. It was really probably like until- When I got the pit yeah. balls, finding an alternative, drink was good and in the very beginning i even went with the zero percent heineken just to have the taste hold, yeah, hold like the bottle like something. you know the little lip in the bottle that type of thing when i was grilling we tried to make like less trips to the pool it was the end of summer so just the times that we would automatically think of a drink we tried to either do something different whether it was like eating at a different place in the house like we used to eat at the table and we would have a drink there let's eat on the couch let's go eat on the back porch let's do something else we started trying to find stuff to look forward to it actually just came up because i think shark week is starting like this uh, week yeah, and it that. was like right around the time we quit drinking and it was almost like ooh, this is exciting what can we look forward to tonight which is going to be on shark week tonight started watching like america's funniest home videos with the kids because it was like light and even like once the kids went to bed would be a time in the past when we'd like have another drink so we started which we kind of do anyway sometimes but putting in airpods and listening to an inspirational podcast or the book, I think it's called This Naked Mind, actually is yeah. an amazing book that somehow, I don't know, it's like some hypnosis or something. <laughs> it took every last little tiny bit of wanting to drink that I had and took it away. I don't really know how, but that book follows very closely with what the guy that you did counseling with. And it was voodoo magic. Consuming yourself with content. If you're scrolling on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok already, find the like sober pages. And there are some and they're fun. And another thing, and I kind of felt bad about it still, laying the flooring in the attic, putting together a catio, this table we're sitting on right now, sanding that down, finding stuff just to keep me busy. And before I knew it, I would look up and it's like almost eight o'clock and she's been in here with the kids all night. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like I didn't, but then I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry, but like <laughs> I'm keeping myself busy, damn it. And once I got past like eight o'clock, I knew I was good because then I was like okay I can eat dinner and go to bed there would be times where we come home from a baseball game or tournament or something at nine o'clock at night and I'm like make me a drink that was always a sore point for me like even I remember back from like even when we were first married and we would go hang out with friends like you know you go to your friend's house go to dinner go back and hang out with friends play some games have a few drinks get home the normal couple is like all going getting ready for bed like the house is already shut down you've been gone all night he goes and makes a drink and goes to sit on the couch and i'm like what are, what are we doing like why are you why do you need another drink my buzz wore off on the way home you know we're st we're starting back up baby <laughs> You know, that was my thought. It's but I'm like, to... why are you wasting? Go, baby, to me, go. I'm like, you're wasting the calories and you're wasting the like alcohol just to go to bed. And half the time, you'd make it and, and fall, then asleep fall asleep and then halfway through still it. Still have ice in it, with, and I would put it in the fridge for the next night so I wouldn't waste it. Finding ways to improve yourself because not only, or to do something that's going to have a positive outcome, like doing this table, doing the attic, putting in AirPods and cleaning up the kitchen so the next morning I'd wake up to a clean kitchen. Things that would make you feel good, but I think that also contributes to your feeling of like, okay, I got this. Not only am I stopping drinking, but I'm improving my life. Like my house is looking better. I'm building things. I'm gonna play devil's advocate though and ask and maybe save this for the next video, but what, at what point is that like turning into a dry drunk and just going through that? same motions but without the alcohol and that's mm -hmm. where it can get really difficult to work in and and that's so. where our brains differ because i don't even think like that i'm not saying become addicted to it and overdo it i'm not but i feel like i like did <laughs> did and, and still tend to not want to go to bed yet because i'm still just like my brain is so i'm adhd you know so i don't know it's a it's a weird 
thing. We'll talk about it more in the next video. That's an interesting question. Y'all leave some comments down below and let us know what you have and what you want to know about what we've been going through. And I'm sure y'all have been going through the same thing in a different sort of way, but all connected. Thank y'all for watching, for your support, and all your wonderful comments and everything else. Um, we'd love to continue talking about this. It's been, it's a year for me in two days that I quit drinking. Oh, it's been a year? In two days. You didn't? Oh, in, in two, two days. days. I thought you said a year <laughs> and two days. I was like, let's go. Where's the champagne? I was oh, really? Oh, tricked you. In two days, it will be a year. So we're finally at a place where we feel confident talking about it. And we can't not talk about it because I just feel like I want to be able to talk about it. I want to provide some value to you guys and help you. That's what it happened for me aside mm -hmm. from you and what caused me to stop drinking based on our relationship i had already been seeing people post and people like talking about their stories and i was like Ooh, you know what maybe like maybe my drinking is affecting my life too mm -hmm. so deep deep stuff y'all hit that like button subscribe and we will see you next time see you bye, bye. this has been a reality check <laughs>